Christi. And our Indiana County Commissioners on the line with us this morning. Our conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. Commissioner Mike Keith, Commissioners Robin Gorman and Shireen Hess. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Good morning, Good morning. Good to have you all with us here today. Commissioner Keith, the Commissioner's Chairman, let's uh, start with you. What's on the agenda for us today? Well, I uh, probably could talk about the broadband that the county's actually uh, had the press conference on a couple weeks ago, and um, we're planning on putting $3 million out to bid, and I believe that'll be coming out shortly. And uh, kind of excited about that. Um, if you remember last year, we, we put out uh, $2.3 million, and uh, so this is actually going to uh, actually increase uh, what we did last year. So with that being said, a lot of good things uh, reached out to many more residents in Indiana County, and uh, as we've said, we're going to commit to it and we'll continue with it, but uh, kind of anxious to see uh, what the bids come in at. Yeah, well, everybody is. Uh, everybody is interested in this, of course, uh, and we saw over the course of the last year what it means to have good Internet and what it means to not have it and, and how much of a disadvantage it is to not have good Internet access. Uh, the The whole process of putting everything together and making it work um, is a tremendous undertaking. It takes a lot of hands to get this working, doesn't it? Sure does. I mean, uh, you know, at the press conference, you actually saw – uh, how many leaders uh, came together, you know, to actually make uh, the efforts as far as the funding goes and the construction plans and everything. So it does take a, a quite a bit of uh, work on a lot of, you know, parts to uh, make the wheel turn. Yeah, absolutely does. Uh, and folks, um, and I don't know that this information, uh, people that latch on to it as quickly as they should, uh, but there is a way for people to track exactly what's happening with broadband in Indiana County, isn't there? Are you referring to the webs? The, uh, yeah. the, 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 we need broadband now. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, that all, effort, all of yeah. the, all of the online efforts to let people know exactly what uh, Indiana County has to offer and uh, what we expect for the future. I think if uh, you actually go on to uh, the Planning Commission's website, there probably uh, is, a, is a map of it all actually on there. Yeah, absolutely. So that's that's what I was getting at uh, uh, for this. Uh, there's a way that people can understand exactly what the plans are and understand as well that these plans are always in development and uh, that it, it does take a tremendous amount of work to make that happen. What else are we talking about this morning, folks? Well, I would like to say a little bit about our, our agricultural community. Uh, it's uh, farming season. I think if you drive around anywhere in our beautiful county, you'll see the corn popping up and other crops popping up. And I just wanted to say a little bit about our conservation district. Um, with their, um, we moved into the new headquarters uh, earlier this year. They're finally um, really completing the building now, and it's beautiful, beautiful building, um, you know, about 7,400 square feet of office space and an education center. And, you know, the, the district is a very important part of our local economy because they work with developers and agricultural producers to help them uh, get, you know, get through the process of soil health and water quality and land management. So those are all really important elements to um, growing our local economies. And also we're all about conservation education and connecting citizens and our youth with our resources and how important they are to our local economies as well. And we work with lots of other partners in, in our area, the, um, the municipalities for dirt and gravel road improvements, uh, addressing pollution, preserving farmland, environmental education. So I guess I just wanted to say a little shout out to the Conservation District. And we now have a new organization called the Friends of the Indiana County conservation district so that people can make donations um, donors can help support these efforts uh, so that we can keep our, our our agricultural community and our and our um, other uh, folks who depend on the district growing and and uh, moving forward yeah it is such a a, a tenuous industry because uh, you're so dependent upon what's happening weather wise and the various market conditions uh, farmers of course they they always have a struggle and uh, this year they're struggling as well with the the price of fuel to produce their products so whatever we can do to support them yeah, is, 
really important. That's right, Todd. They're, they're very vulnerable, and, and we have a great district, and, and we're hiring a new agricultural specialist. So we really are very serious about being a, a big support to our farming community. Yeah, and broadband is a part of that discussion as well. It seems to be a part of every discussion. Commissioner Gorman, I don't sure think is. we've heard from you yet today. Yeah, well, I will take off of both of my colleagues and um, go right into, um, as Commissioner Hess was talking about, our conservation district. And if everybody remembers, the commissioners continue to charge along in developing what we call our educational hub with our ICTC, our conservation district, which is now in place, the building, um, and having meetings and, and office hours there now. And right beside it is upgoing the Westmoreland Community College, the new facility. And if you haven't been up there, it's amazing what's actually being done. Uh, and remember, that whole partnership, along with the No Wrong Door approach and for our future pipeline of quality workforce, is combined with IUP and programming, and we continue to develop and work all of those things to help our workforce um, work on uh, getting the jobs that they need to be productive, particularly now that we're coming out of and recovering, hopefully, from COVID. And, of course, the Indiana County Commissioners work with our Center for Economic Operations team um, and, again, what kind of industry can we bring here? Thinking ahead, um, I'm sure everyone has heard about Senator Pittman's um, accomplishment with the, the latest bill with regard to legislative action on the REGI. But, you know, we continue to work every day behind the scenes and in the scenes as much as we can to plan for jobs and uh, so that we retain our good workers and graduates here and, and they have jobs to have here in Indiana County. Yeah, it's uh, really, really important for us to to help to get back on our feet as a county. Um, and, and there are initiatives out there all the time. There are, We're hearing about funding that is available for this effort or for that to help get us back on our feet. Um, this ERAP program, we've been talking with um, Lisa Spencer from the Department of Human Services about every week uh, about the ERAP yep. program. Uh, that's a tremendous thing, and yep. we wish that it could be um, used in a, in a different way in terms of uh, uh, having to, to give money back, and we certainly don't want to be in the position of having to give money back that's been earmarked for Indiana County. Uh, but those are the sorts of things that you work with the local lawmakers, with Senator Pittman and with uh, Congressman Thompson and, and others in Washington to make happen. Uh, there are some uh, some really solid efforts going on to bring funding into Indiana County and then to convert those funds into uh, things that are going to be really beneficial. And jobs are right there at the top of that list. Yeah, I couldn't yeah, agree with you. Development. Mm -hmm. yeah. go, go ahead, Commissioner. It's, uh, you're right on about workforce development. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and as Todd is elating, and um, it gets us into our world, right? And um, when the CARES Act funding came out initially, Todd, the commissioners, not just ourselves, but our entire association across Pennsylvania and across the nation, to be honest with you, really lobbied Washington, D.C. for longer timelines to use money more, you know, responsibly and put it where the real needs are. And if you notice in this last bill with ARP, the American Recovery Plan, those dollars came specifically out to not just counties, but municipalities and boroughs, and then all of these other pockets of funding. So we continue to work with all of our directors, and mainly Lisa, because they've done a heck of a job with ICAP with this ERAP program. But we try to take back those things to our federal and state legislators and say, you know, in order to use this money better and truly for the need that's there, we need to lighten up on this guideline or this requirement. And so we try to do better every time we go through something. But you're right. It's, it's a lot better. It's more targeted. And I think the money is really being um, allocated in a way that it's really trying to help us get back on our feet. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and actually, the uh, the broadband that's actually you know going out now for bid uh, 1.5 of that actually came uh, came down from uh, uh, G T Thompson made the announcement, and we had to match it with the 1.5. So again, you know, working with local and federal that that uh, surely helps out Indiana County. Um, for the group of you, I don't know if any of you have the answer to this question, but um, 
Uh, one of you mentioned to Reggie a couple of moments ago, has the state reached out to Indiana County specifically and said, this is what we want to do in terms of uh, implementing Reggie and uh, then uh, sending some, some support to the county for the workers that would lose their jobs? Uh, well, I, I, heard on the, I heard on the radio that statement was made by the governor uh, about him actually having jobs uh, to replace the jobs that were lost and at the at you know as we stand here today no uh we have not received anything you know from the governor itself you know to this date so he's not reached out specifically to indiana county and 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 then we know according to senator spitman and representative struzzi that uh, he's not come to this area no he hasn't he, we have not heard from him all right well we hope that that you uh, know todd and and not to, you know, again, I, I don't want to get in the political fray of things. I'll leave that to our other folks. But the the important part about reaching out and to your listeners and the people of Indiana County is just to stress we're trying so hard to fight this off, even though eventually we know over time the economic shift of coal-powered plants and fossil fuels is going to change. The problem is the timing and trying to replace jobs and do what's right for our county because we are going to be so devastatingly impacted if this happens quickly. So, you know, we just want our residents to be aware of it, to help us with this issue and figure out how to replace those jobs and to transition to a new economy, like you said, to get us back up on our feet and viable and um, productive. All right. Well, we're hoping that uh, we get some information and that folks can uh, come to a good resolve on all of this. I want to thank you all for joining us here this morning on Indiana in the Morning. Thank you, Todd. Thank you. Have a great week. You too. We'll see you. It is the voice of Indiana County WCCS 101.1 FM and AM 1160. AM 1160.